Good evening, Madam President and Trustees. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, we received several um, of your annual reports during the month of December, and the first of those uh, following the audit, the end of November, is our annual uh, fall student enrollment report. So um, here's how we think about it, is I don't believe there are many more significant decisions that families make uh, beyond where and how their children will be educated. And I feel like this student enrollment report is among the most profound feedback we receive as an organization as to how we're doing and where and when and how families are choosing to attend the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Uh, we take that responsibility very seriously and uh, we believe that the best opportunity for children lies in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. And yet we also know, trustees at this table know, that we have to do a lot of planning in order to be prepared for the numbers of students at the right grade level, in the right configuration, and ensuring that they have wonderful services um, as a part of their educational program and a rich and robust educational experience. So with that being said, trustees, this report becomes one of the most significant reports we share uh, throughout the year of so many reports that you get. Uh, so trustees, if it's all right, I'll walk through the presentation which you have. Ms. Helton and Ms. Osinski have, uh, I think, placed those with you. You also have, as you always do, the six supplemental charts. They are behind your presentation. And for those folks in the audience or joining us uh, remotely, those will all be posted uh, with everything else. So uh, they'll be there for everyone to see. Uh, let's walk through the presentation and then I know trustees that we'll have a robust discussion. This is kind of the outline of what we'll look at as we go. Uh, first of all, let's just get the number right out in the open. We look for purposes of this report to head count. So these are the actual number of bodies that we serve. Now, you will see from finance, Mr. Dimitru and our auditors last week, uh, number that is the FTE, the full-time equivalent. So don't let that confuse you uh, because sometimes we have students at preschool or on a part-time basis and so uh, it adds up to be a little bit different number. These are actually the number of students we serve in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Almost 18,000 in our K-12 campuses. They are actually Wi-Fi. Y5-12 campuses, and then 473 students in preschool. We mentioned it earlier, those are at the Westerman Preschool Center. They are now, um, they have been at Allen and at Thurston, and now trustees, you know we've added, very proudly added preschool at Mitchell as well. So the total students that we are serving, 18,400 and 34 students this year. What does that look like over time? You can see that this year we've added 280 um, individuals, students, um, in, into our overall caseload here in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. That is a 1,512 student increase since 2013-14. You remember uh, in 2013-14, um, uh, we did experience a little town downturn. You can see there about 200 students we lost that year. And then since 2014, gained uh, the 1,512 students. One of the first questions we ask is, where is the increase occurring? This next uh, page will show you that we are seeing increases at all three levels. At elementary, we've added 763 students over this same 2013 to 18 timeframe. 
at middle, 280 students, and at high school, 469 students. We're very proud of our preschool programming. Uh, Ms. Linden oversees that programming, and make no mistake, trustees, this is one of our chief equity pathways in the district, ensuring that we get uh, the earliest, the children to school at the earliest possible date so that we can get them, I say, into the on-ramp of K-12 school, get them ready for kindergarten. You can see that we've increased each year and now just uh, right at 473 students across all of our preschool programs. And Westerman Preschool and Family Center, as you know, trustees, because you're in and out of there, Trustee Mitchell has uh, a student there. Uh, they, they are so full. So uh, we're, our preschool programs are full, and we're very proud of that work. Trustees, you also know another area that we look at is our Washtenaw Consortia, our WEOC programs. Those are our Y High, that is the IB program at Y High in Ypsilanti, our Early College Alliance, and our WAVE program. And you can see there exactly the enrollment this year, 198 students being educated across those three programs. Here's what it looks like over time. Trustees who've been on the board, who've served on the board a while, you recall that we were very intentional with the Pathways program to make sure that we put many um, uh, experiences and supplemental opportunities at Pathways because we wanted to give a better experience and to give that opportunity to our students who might be choosing WAVE, but we also wanted them to have a, a beautiful option at Pathways. So we have seen that WAVE number come down uh, since the consolidation of Pathways in the enhancement as we joined Roberto Clemente in uh, A2 Tech at that campus. What we know about Ann Arbor is that Ann Arbor is an international city. It is a city on the move. So uh, trustees, you know this, we don't try to add up all of these next slides because children are coming in, children are going out, and those efforts overlap each other. So uh, here are some of the arrivals, folks who've joined us this year. So this year, 292 additional students joining us from inside the Ann Arbor Public Schools attendance boundaries. And you can see over four years, uh, 1,261 students additional from inside the boundaries. You all receive regular reports on our projections from housing development in the area, and you know that that number will continue to rise, at least we expect so. Uh, here's what it looks like year over year when uh, trustees and community members and staff ask the question, where are they coming from when they come to us from inside our boundaries? And you can see here that charter, private, and parochial are the three top areas. And then we'll always get a few from home, school, and online and other uh, locations. So uh, that's the analysis of where they're coming from. Um, second part of this is are they coming to us from near? Or are they coming to us from far? Uh, on the left side of the screen, you see those arriving from inside the county. So those are the other eight uh, districts in our county. And you can see this year, 77 students came from there. And these are Ann Arbor residents. So it means uh, that they either moved their household or uh, somehow, whether it was a custody or whatever, they are actually, these students are actually living in the attendance boundaries. Entering from outside the county, uh, 704 students this year. And you can see there, 
charter, private, other public schools in Michigan, out of country, pretty consistently about 250 students each year from out of the country and then out of the state, not very different. A total of 704 students coming uh, from outside the county. Here are total new residents that have entered over the previous three years. You can see that number uh, bounces in the 700s. This year approaching 800 students, 781. We always keep an eye on our school of choice enrollment. And you can see here uh, that 511 students joined the Ann Arbor Public Schools this year through schools of choice. And that of that 511, 118 joined us, um, continued their enrollment in the Ann Arbor Public Schools, which means that they moved their home location and used the schools of choice to continue their enrollment without disruption. I will also point out, and you will see the numbers, trustees, on your charts at the back of your packet, that about uh, one, one and a half percent of our overall enrollment are non-resident children of employees. They are also in that number that they join us uh, by riding in the car with the staff member uh, to get to Ann Arbor Public Schools each day. That is a benefit, trustees, that you have offered over many, many years. It's a benefit we're proud of, um, and it does represent a portion of our schools of choice enrollment. Now let's switch. We have to switch gears here. Um, and you notice I love Ms. Osinski has the moving van uh, going away. Uh, in this picture. So from these next few slides, we'll be talking about students who have exited from the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Over the previous three years, and you can see where they're going, always find it interesting uh, that out of the U.S. and into the U.S. is a pretty consistent 250 to 275 number um, and you can see there uh, the other large numbers uh, moving out of state, uh, moving out of county, and then short moves, 180 students uh, going to some other in-county uh, or WISD campus. Uh, total exiting uh, this year, uh, 1,372 students. Just a few highlights and things that we're thinking about. Trustees, we've been on a mission uh, to increase our early learning opportunities. We want to ensure that happens in every neighborhood, not just in some neighborhoods. And so we're very proud to see a five-year increase at Young Fives of 315 students. The enrollment this year, trustees, last spring when we talked about this, our goal, we feel like there's a possible 400 students or so in this group um, out there in the world. And we do that very roughly from just data indicators that we have. So it's not a precise number, but I'm so proud that we're getting 345. I would like to see that number get up to 400. We just love getting young fives in and making sure every child is ready for the first day of kindergarten. Um, and speaking of kindergarten, 174 additional kindergartners. Um, and so combining those two important grades, a total of 489 additional young five and kinders over five years. I wanna applaud Ms. Dawn Linden, our elementary and preschool uh, principals. They've done an incredible job to expand opportunities for students. It's the very heart of one of our many equity uh, endeavors. Um, notable increases by grade. We always ask ourselves, where are they coming in? And trustees, you know our children don't fall in little neat little batches of 25. Um, they do come in and Often we're looking at birth rates. Uh, Ms. Linden reminded me the other day, the birth rate is up 
in Washtenaw County, so we're delighted about that. That means in three or four years, we'll have uh, increases in enrollment if we can keep them here in the county. Here are some notable grade level increases. Uh, we already talked about the addition at Y5 in Kinder. Uh, also one at second grade, fourth grade, 10th grade, and 12th grade. And that, um, that bubble in high school, I'm, we made a new slide this year. Uh, we're gonna talk more about that in just a little bit. Uh, we have this uh, larger batch of students and I know Ms. Parks was telling me about it coming out of middle school and it is now moving into high school and you will see that uh, very shortly. Notable increases by school. Trustees, you know these well because you've built uh, some of these places for students to go. Uh, Eber White, uh, additional 32 students. Um, that was the addition uh, uh, that we knew was coming. Mitchell, 23 students. Steam at Northside, an additional 25 students. They're now at 631 students. Uh, an additional 93 students at Huron High School, and then an additional 138 at Pioneer High School. And part of that 138 was an extremely large class coming out of both Slauson and Tap. And I can't see Ms. Parks, but she'll uh, send me a telepathic message. Uh, but as I recall, that's exactly what that increase at Pioneer is connected to. Um, and because of that, I wanted to uh, just focus in for uh, a little bit this evening on our three high schools. Trustees, you know that we've been on a path to um, differentiate with programming and ensure that we're getting more toward balance in our high schools. What's confounding us at the moment is this core in the city of a large group of kids. So we're gonna keep an eye on that to see if it's continuing. Uh, Huron is increasing, and you'll see their date on another slide in a moment. Uh, you see it here as well. They're increasing every, every year. So the, um, the IB pathway is doing uh, what folks told us it will do, and that is that folks are attending there. We are looking at Skyline. I will remind the community, I know the trustees are aware of this, Skyline has the smallest attendance boundary area, and that was done by design when Skyline was built, um, and a lot of that area is not yet developed, and we do know that development is coming in. We also are looking at magnet programming there because our goal, what we learned over time, and, and you all understand this, is that our families vote with their feet. And so providing rich programming and inviting our students to choose their high school uh, doesn't shake up the enrollment uh, very much from if we uh, demanded that they go to their home school. Um, if we demanded that they go to their home school, uh, we know from experience that students would exit our system. So uh, we will continue, trustees, to monitor this, and I will share with you that we're doing some work over December around capacity and counts. We'll also share with you that all of these numbers are fully staffed in the school. So just because the school is larger, the class counts uh, are monitored and are watched. So I did want to point there to high school. Here's some additional highlights in this count. Uh, Mitchell Elementary, trustees, you know it well because you've, uh, you've approved two additions to Mitchell Elementary, a 55% increase, and that really started turning up after 2014, um, and this is a really healthy increase of all kinds of families choosing Mitchell Elementary uh, and really improving that great school community there. Uh, Scarlet Middle, another highlight, additional 138 students. That's a 28% increase since 2013. You recall, trustees, those of you who were on the board when we chose to place the programming here, that Scarlet had been on a declining path and we wanted to, uh, to see that coming back up and I'm delighted to see it sustain over a six-year 
time frame that is durable and sustainable change. Um, here on high school, an additional 205 students, and you can see that's a 13% increase. Um, they did lose uh, students um, back in the, in the uh, 12 through 14 time frame. Uh, so we are delighted to see them coming up uh, with the increase there. A2 STEAM at Northside, uh, of course, trustees, you recall, uh, that school was at 189 students back in 2013. Uh, redesign of that campus and the programming, and that increase is 233%. Uh, don't worry if folks in the community don't know this, we did add on to the school, so the capacity uh, is for about 710 students, so, uh, so that is a highlight. We continue uh, to experience challenges, trustees, and you know, and we all understand, the biggest challenge is a decline in enrollment. So I'm pleased this evening that we're sharing that enrollment has increased. Uh, the very kiss of death on a district is when enrollment starts to decline, parents start to choose away from a district. Uh, we don't think of our children as funding, but we know that that is the way the Michigan model is built. And so we are, uh, first of all, we know that we offer the very best in programming. Uh, secondly, uh, we know that we must uh, continue to attract students in order to offer the programs and to take care of our staff as we want to. Uh, before we move through our challenges and our next steps, trustees, I do want to point out and for the community so they can take a look, our headcount by school uh, will be up on the website, so you have that document. Our headcount comparison year to year is your second uh, chart that's up. Our third one is around students by ethnic group and school. We keep an eye on that as well. We also have our residency chart. And so I wanted to mention, trustees, that you will see uh, our number of resident students, our percentage overall in the district is 88.4%. When we add on the 1.4% who are children of employees, that puts us right on, right at 90% resident enrollment or coming in the car uh, with their parent to work into school each day. Um, trustees, you've heard me in one-on-one -on -one meetings and December is the time when the enrollment team, the K-12 executive directors and I do the deep dive on where is there space and where do we not have space so that we dial back that valve of school of choice to ensure uh, that our needs are met in the district, but also to make sure that, um, that every child has the best opportunity for a quality education. So that chart is your residency chart. Uh, the fifth chart is uh, free and reduced lunch by school. That is important data that we look at to determine impact um, and trustees, your last chart is the count day enrollments by grade. And uh, this is the crossways chart uh, that you read on an angle. And that's how you follow a cohort of students through their entire uh, 13 or 14 years of education in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. So those support documents are here with you tonight and they will be published as a part of this report. Let's look at our challenges. Ann Arbor is a city on the move. We continue to be challenged and yet it is our regular rhythm that a, <laughs> that a couple thousand students will move in and out and around and that is the nature of our work and we're happy to do that work. Uh, one time, one of our in-house journalists said it's like attending a symphony. And in the 15 minutes before the program begins, people are hustling about to find their seat. 
And that's how we feel as we move through the summer months. The families are hustling about the Ann Arbor community and finding their place. Um, and we know that it starts actually in February with kindergarten roundups. Our uh, future kindergarten parents are marking their calendars now. Many of them will be attending multiple kindergarten roundups as we move into February. So mobility is a challenge. Trustees, you know because you hear the reports from our architects and our housing development analysts who come to see us. We must continue to keep our eye on short, mid, and long-term space needs. So trustees, you know what we do on our team is we're looking at the young fives in kinder class and we're extrapolating ahead for a decade to say, will we be in good shape on every campus as we move through this next decade? Thirdly, we're keeping our eye and planning for capacity in locations where demand outpaces supply. That was what was behind our K-8 campus at Carpenter location. The development is going in there very quickly in the south corner of the district. We also have a challenge in the northeast quadrant uh, along Green uh, Road, we have a lot of development there. And then trustees, you know on the west side, Abbott, Forsyth, and Skyline are feeling the impact of additional enrollment on the west side. We will be continuing to plan for new housing developments. Um, we're also monitoring and will be specializing programming to continue to help balance our high school enrollment going forward, keeping an eye on that so that we are sure that all three high schools, they are all well utilized, but we want to make sure to continue to balance that. Uh, we will be evaluating deeply over the coming 15 days or so to plan for our enrollment windows. And trustees, you know we're receiving calls now because parents want to know when does the window open. We're required to have that up on the website shortly after the first of the year. So we are deeply analyzing where is their space and capacity and what do we need to know as a district and as a team and as a board to prepare for that. And then finally, trustees, you had an update in the fall uh, but we will be bringing an additional update in February because we feel like this matter is so uh, something that we need to vigilantly watch and monitor. And so with that, trustees, we are proud that the Ann Arbor Public Schools is an organization that families and students continue to select for one of their most important decisions that they make, and that is where and how their children will be educated. We also understand that each year brings its own unique challenges, and you can see this year particular challenges that we face around capacity, around balancing enrollment across schools and across the district. Trustees, our commitment is to be proactive, to stay ahead of this increase. We do appreciate that we are one of the very few districts in the state that gets to have this problem, and I put that word problem in quotation marks, um, that problem of increased enrollment is not something that very many districts face. And in fact, there are districts across uh, the state that are having to close schools. And we understand how very tragic that that is for a district. And so with that, trustees, I'm happy to receive your questions. I want to uh, take a moment to thank our team Ms. Candy Roselle Williams, uh, my own assistant, uh, uh, Karen Soderberg, and then thirdly, Mr. James Markham, whom we borrowed to help us. We borrowed James out of ITD, so I should thank ITD because they did without their person. As you know, trustees, we've been experiencing some transition in the enrollment and research department, and yet I called on these three individuals and they answered the call. I want you to know, trustees, they've been working on the weekend 
in, in trying to do their regular work and help with the count in order to have the count ready for us this evening. I do thank them for their incredible work and thank you, Ms. Dickinson Kelly, for mobilizing that team. Uh, we are this week in interviews to, uh, to settle our enrollment and research department. So we'll be coming forward with a couple of um, folks in the very near future um, and be able to get in our Republic schools back with an established team that will help us and do that work. <laughs> and so with that, uh, Madam President, I'll uh, be, pre will be prepared for questions. I do have them, I didn't require them to come out this evening, but I do have them on text. Uh, they are watching, they have the reports in front of them, and they will be sending answers as we need them. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for preparing this. I think uh, the team did a wonderful job, and I know we, were, we are in transition right now in terms of having permanent staff um, to help us with this analysis. So thank you for everyone that came together. You did a phenomenal job. And the supplemental charts are fantastic. I love the cohort chart. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> But I think you did a nice job um, preparing, you know, and anticipating the kind of questions the board would have. So really just one additional chart came up this evening. This is complex, and I hope people do appreciate. <coughs> it always astounds me the amount of transition we have in and out of the Ann Arbor Public Schools, about 1,000 kids every year in and out. And so it's um, you guys do a great job planning and anticipating and accommodating all our kids in all our buildings um, and getting to the kind of class sizes we're trying to target. So that's a lot of work.